The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchases of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $50 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. It's always unnerving, you know, when you check a group of hunters and the hunter that's hiding evidence is a 13-year-old. Uh, the trailer camera is a 16-foot box trailer that I turned into a giant camera and dark room. In the park, we have approximately 216 bird species recorded. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. Let's go, buddy. Come on. I'm Christy Bales, and this is my canine partner, Ruger. Come on, gotta go. I've been a game warden for approximately 11 years, and I'm stationed what up? in the Travis County area. He is a certified peace officer. You know, he's been commissioned. His badge number is K95. All of our dogs are very high drive. They need a job. The job that we give them is to use their nose. You know, it's just a win-win for everybody. I really enjoy K9 because, you know, you, you uh, create a bond with your dog. You do a lot of training. And, and then when you get that call, you know, to go help another officer, you know, it's, it's extremely rewarding. I served four years in the Air Force doing law enforcement, and I was exposed to canine at that point. So that's really where my interest in canine began. Our program started in 2013, and we did all of our training in Utah Post, which is equivalent to Texas DPS. Good boy. We have traveled there for narcotics, police search and rescue, instructor school. That's where we have received most of our training. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Some of the calls that we have been on include illegal game searches, search and rescue of a missing person, including criminal tracks. We have also have been on a lot of article recovery for evidence. The dogs can quickly locate items and cut down on search time. We assist a lot with water safety patrol. Um, when we're out there trying to find boaters that are uh, boating while intoxicated. They could also be impaired on controlled substances, and our dogs can help find those. How you doing? Good. We're going to come here. Here go. That's good hunts, yeah. Mm -hmm. Name is Sam Schonefeld, and I'm a Texas game warden. That's the break. Blitz, uh, who, who's my partner, he's with me every day. He's the one partner that will always keep you going. He's never tired. He's always ready to go. He's something that you need. And, and we need him up here or across the state, finding uh, deer or, sh or shell casings or rifles or pistols. What's up? He's trained when he finds it, he lays down. If it's uh, something the wildlife faces, a deer or a blood drop or a shell casing, and all he knows is a reward pops up. Hey! And, and, and he's ready to find something again. So growing up as a uh, kid in East Texas, I could say we, I grew up in probably the best region of the state, the Piney Woods. Ready? Oh, man. When you're at the house, he gets just to be a part of the family. He gets to run around and play with other dogs, plays with my son Cooper. And, but then it comes to a point when you watch him out there, he's done. He's where's dad. It's, it's time to go back to work, dad. He still knows that he has a job to do, and his job is to go to work with me and, and find something. There we go. So we had a, a group of hunters come in. Uh, what we want Blitz to do is to uh, work the boat, go to the largest source of odor. Let's go. So one thing you're going to notice is, let's go, come on, let's go. The amount of odor that's going to be all over the boat. Come on. Uh, shotgun residue. 
ducks that have been there in the past and uh, ducks that may be in there now. So uh, we just used blitz to see if they left anything behind. There we go. And sure enough, they left a, uh, left a duck in there. Good hunts, Blitz. So uh, they were able to keep the bird, and it, it keeps them from getting a citation for waste of game. All in all, no violations, but it was a good find for the dog. Today we're doing a organized group training. We rarely get to meet like this because we're all spread out across the state. Game one, canine search and rescue, sending my dog, make some noise. We couldn't do this type of work without the funding and generous donations from the public who donated to Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. Good job, buddy. Kermit, watch. Watch. I started in 1976. And I've done everything from Kermit. confirmation to obedience to hunt tests to therapy dogs. Good girl, Carmen. And I always loved how the dogs can work with people and they love to have jobs. And so part of the canine unit is those wonderful dogs that, you know, help support the canine officers and do their job. Come on, good girl. When they first started them up, they were looking for funds to help the canine units get started. Good girl. I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to honor Good. Robin's involvement with dogs over the last 30 years and, and sponsor one of the canine units uh, for her. Good. So I would encourage everybody to uh, help support these canine units with the equipment and the dogs and the training that they need to, to perform their mission. It's amazing how many missions they perform in service to the general public. What you got, Woodrow? You got the man? Oh, oh, you got good the man? Boy. Good boy. Good boy. So I got a call this morning from Sonny, the game warden out of Bastrop County, and he entered a property to check a group of dove hunters. You know, I continue to be en route because Sonny felt that maybe there's a there was a chance that they hit a, a shotgun or something. So, um, you know, I was gonna assist with Ruger to do an article search. How's it going, Sonny? We got a 13 year old. He just came out right now. He's claiming he wasn't hunting. Okay. So I'm gonna finish writing to take it and uh, see what they say. Now, are they related in any way, brothers or? They're friends. Okay. How y'all doing, State Game Warden Christy Vales? How's it going? You mind uh, stepping out with this officer real quick? How are you, young man? I'm good. So you doing any hunting today? Uh, no, no. Not at all? No. Do you have a hunting license? No, I do not. Okay. Most of y'all don't have a hunting license. So I'm gonna get my canine partner out Ruger just to clear the area and make sure that uh, we don't find any uh, shotguns or, or anything like that, okay? Yeah. All right. So no hunting at all? But I have been doing a little bit of hunting. Okay. Uh, is your shotgun here so we can check it to make sure you got a plug in it? I don't know where it is. You don't know where it's at. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you being honest about, about hunting, okay? Um, what we're going to do is if you can just go back there and just stay with uh, Officer Alanese, uh, and then uh, I'm going to get my canine out, okay? Okay. All right. Come on. Oh, you ready to go to work? Huh? You ready to go to work? That's a good boy. Let's go. Ready? Revere. Anytime we go on a real deployment, it's a brand new area, um, new smells. Uh, he can feel our adrenaline and excitement. Um, you know, it's a lot different than a training scenario. So he did very well. Good boy. That's a good boy. Yes. Good job, buddy. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's a good revere, buddy. As a canine handler, I will not touch the evidence. 
because I don't want my fingerprints on it. I'll go back and contact Warden Alanese, but because there's only two of us, officer, officer safety, I'll just go switch, watch the guys, uh, put Ruger up, and he can come back and take photos and get the shotgun. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a verbal warning. No ticket this time, but if it happens again, you will get a ticket. You understand? Yes, sir. All right. I'll go ahead and step back over there. It's very unfortunate that the individual that is hiding evidence is the minor, the 13-year-old. If the adults that he was with had Hunter's education, this probably would have been avoided, and the young child would have been educated on the ethics of hunting. You know, several of the adults didn't have a hunting license, um, and it's just not a good example for, you know, that young 13-year-old. You ready? You ready? You ready? Go get it. Good boy. It's our scheduled day off. I like to take Ruger to the park and just let him run and be a dog and enjoy himself so he doesn't have any stress. Good boy. Today, we're just out here throwing the ball and, you know, just letting him swim and have a good time. All of us Game Warren K-9 units, we love what we do and we're very dedicated to serving the public. These K-9s are amazing animals and we are extremely proud to have them as our K-9 partners. Yeah, that's a good boy. Good job, buddy. Oh, yeah. yeah, and can you see its legs? Way down in South legs. Texas, there's a place where you can go to see birds. Yeah, his feet are yellow and his legs are black. Lots of birds. This is Esteriano Grande State Park in Westaco, Texas. Part of the World Birding Center. One on the left is probably a couch or a tropical kingbird. And there's a least grieve in the middle of the pond? No. The World Birding Center consists of nine sites throughout the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, three of those are state parks. I'd like to welcome you all to Estereona Grande State Park. Here you can see birds in a tree, birds on the water, birds on a wire, and birds on a nest. In the park, we have approximately 216 bird species recorded. On just a regular day, you can sit on this deck for an hour or two and easily spot 30 to 40 species of birds. All of these birds come to Estero Llano Grande because there is a lot of different habitat in a little bit of area. We have shallow wetlands, deep wetlands, woodlands, thorn scrub. The diverse habitat brings in the diverse species and that's really important to have here in South Texas. Diversity begets diversity. This is what? The full of this compared to the black-bellied, which we saw a lot of. What have we seen today? Black-bellied whistling duck, black-necked stilts, beautiful views of a sora today. For us eastern birders, these are southern specialties. Not all of the residents of Estero Llano Grande have wings. The birds share the space with a variety of animals, some slow, some slithery, and some substantially sizable. Yes, we do have a few alligators. They're a major attraction, and we're hoping that really pulls in some of the locals because they're really interested and in, uh, often come just to see the alligators and walk out of the park. We do have a family of alligators that live out here, two adults. So many people in the valley haven't heard of this park. It's often that you forget about the things that are closer to you, and you travel to go see these amazing things. Sam, they'll be swimming out here, get in some air. We're starting to teach them by these school groups. They're quite amazed at what is right here in their backyard. There's something for everybody here at our park. I'm Ian Kaznoff, and I'm the creator of the trailer camera. Right. Setting up for my solo show about the trailer camera. Some people coming tonight to come check out this stuff. Hopefully, there will be people here.
I mean, this isn't like one of those shows where it's like, look at all this amazing stuff I've done. It's more like, look at the journey. It's more about the process of the trailer camera, I think. At least it is for me. I'm a production designer in the film business, mostly television commercials and short documentaries, and a photographer as well. Kind of a multi-tool of a production person. And action. Nice. That supports my photography addiction. Good girl. Ian Kasnoff lives near Austin, Texas, with his wife, two kids, a dog, and a lot of stuff that he collects. All right. I do have a lot of things happening at my little compound. Nice pole barn. This is my Silver Street, an Airstream project. My office sanctuary, storage for unused things. I've got the trailer camera, of course. All right, just straight now. Uh, the trailer camera is a 16-foot box trailer that I turned into a giant camera and dark room. All right, stop. Basically a uh, Polaroid camera on steroids. So I climb inside the trailer camera. There's a lens sticking out of the back. Focus an image on a surface inside the camera. Then I will expose the paper with a very crude shutter. Uh, from there, I'll take the paper and I'll put it through a developer, a stop bath, a fix, and a rinse. Six, seven minutes later, I'll have a giant print. It's not easy to approach photography this way. Ian started taking pictures back in the days before digital cameras, when images were captured on film. When I was a kid, a roll of 24 photographs meant something. You really had to make each one count. And uh, years later, when you, know, you get into digital, it was great because you could just snap happy. You could go around and shoot tons and tons of stuff. And then realizing I'm taking 7,000 images in five days, and you're spending all your time at a computer, you know, why did you take all the rest of them? And it's because you can. Uh, so I, these are uh, basically scouting photos for uh, the Bast Bastrop State Park. And that is the idea behind the trailer camera. Shoot fewer pictures, but make each one count. And in the end, you get an actual physical print. This is a picture of a, out at a lake, in, a stock tank in Blanco. Wyman Minzer, portrait of his sons, Adrian Whip, Spencer Peoples, a girl named Kelly. This is my wife. She's going to love that I'm showing this. I think it's a beautiful picture. The trailer camera is great for shooting portraits, but Ian wanted to shoot some landscapes as well. That led to a series of photographs at some of the more scenic state parks throughout Texas. So I'm not sure how many Texas state parks there are. I've been to probably a dozen. Each one is so unique and so beautiful. They all have a really beautiful photographic opportunity. You guys have that map, right? Yeah. It's been 15 years since I've been to Enchanted Rock. It's so breathtaking. There's so much to it. I was getting distracted by some of the, the features, the geography. I mean, I wanted to stop and shoot everything. This is a developer. Shadows, I'm getting up to four seconds. Couldn't have asked for better conditions. Three, two, one. Wow. Uh, I never knew there was a, a little lake back there. It's pretty cool, huh? Instead of just like, you know, a perfect photograph that exposes everything really well, I kind of wanted a high contrast high key image to where you could even turn the photograph vertically and it's more of an interpretation of the space. To me it has almost uh, an otherworldly feel to it. It is bright. So then next we shot at uh, Bastrop State Park. I'm gonna do one second at F32. I did a portrait of one of the park rangers there. Hold that, nice and steady. Uh, he was kind enough to sit for us and endure the, uh, the agony that is getting shot with this thing. All right, relax. Portraits are really tough with this camera. You have to sit still quite a bit, a lot of do-overs. Perfect. It's really revealing. Everything kind of becomes a case study, a character study. 
Or you see things in it that you don't see in just, just with your naked eye. I think everybody who knows Bastrop State Park knows about the fires and knows how devastating it was. You know, Bastrop is, is really striking when it's full old growth, and it was really striking when it was, you know, the burned trees. At the point when we got out there, it was kind of neither. But what I did really notice is the CCC buildings. So I got the idea to go search around and look at some of these buildings, and I found there's a lookout up top and when I was doing my test photograph, I lined it real square, real symmetrical, real centered. And as I did that, there was a, a sapling growing up, right as you look right through, just one little sapling. So I felt that here's this building that has stood the test of fires, floods, time, and then you have this little bit of life, the rebirth of, of Bastrop State Park in the back. I think Bastrop is, is still a beautiful park, one of the best ones around. Ian made a few more stops on his state park odyssey. At Caddo Lake, he made the first really large prints of the series. At Palo Duro, rapid changes in the weather resulted in two similar but very different photographs. By the time Ian got to Davis Mountain State Park, he was on his fourth focusing screen, his sixth lens, his second truck, and his third trailer. I experienced one of those moments where I thought, this is so hard, this is so ridiculous. I am just making my life miserable by trying to make photographs with this thing. It's dark. I just kind of was like, well, nothing else is working, so let's just do something that shouldn't work. The result, perhaps the most striking landscape of the series. The way that the mountains you know, in the valley and the hills are, are kind of edge lit. And then you have this like kind of sliver of glowing sky and then it just transitions into these clouds and sky that are so rich and so dramatic and vibrant. The kind of photograph I wanted to make with this thing, I was finally holding it in my hand. I realized that I'd finally done it. It's crazy what these four wheels and a steel box have done how great it's been. It is a 16 foot long, seven foot wide, six and a half foot tall trailer. Yeah, I also bought a bigger truck during this. <laughs> a year and a half after he started work on the State Park series, Ian put together his first exhibition of the trailer camera photographs. It probably won't be his last. This process of shooting with the trailer camera is really made me a better photographer all around because it's made me much more selective about the time I'm spending, not just making an image, but also what am I gonna do with it afterwards. I'm gonna put it up on a mat board and make a beautiful framed print. I'm gonna hang it up and someone's gonna love it. It's gonna be a, a work of art that someone's gonna appreciate.
This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program through your purchases of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels. Over $50 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram.